Turn out for truth or fake? Catalina Marshall and Debra over by the big board. This evening in Malmo, Sweden, thousands protested against Israel's participation in this year's Eurovision contest. Some users online claim to show these protests in viral claims. Catalina, tell us more, truth or fake? Well, thousands, even uh, Greta Thunberg, who was detained by the police, so joined in these uh, pro-Palestinian protests uh, that took place in the Swedish city of uh, Malmo uh, against Israel's participation in the Eurovision Song Contest. Uh, let's take a look, uh, look at the following uh, posts of users that uh, claim uh, that these uh, videos show these uh, protests. Uh, this first video uh, that shares uh, this video as well and says that the king of Denmark Apparently, him on this balcony waves the Palestinian flag uh, from his balcony in Denmark in front of a rally demanding an end to the Israeli war in Gaza. We also saw uh, the same claims in the same video also circulating on a TikTok claiming free Palestine from Denmark, also claiming to be the king of Denmark, waving the Palestinian flag. And then there's a second video that's also going around, also viral, where we see uh, these uh, violent demonstrations demonstrations allegedly against Eurovision's Israeli uh, participant, uh, where these users claim, and I quote, that uh, these uh, people violently protesting are pro-Palestinian Muslim migrants who were given shelter in Sweden, now destroying Swedish taxpayers' property by stone pelting. Okay, number of claims there. Let's try and... Um Unpack it all then, Catalina. Uh, we saw the king of Denmark. Well, maybe someone knows what he looks like or what he doesn't look like, so perhaps we can add something to that one. Um, what do these videos really show? Shed some light on this for us. Let's begin uh, debunking where we left off on uh, the video allegedly showing uh, violent Muslim protesters in Malmo, uh, a video that was actually from 2009 here on uh, May 2009 here on YouTube and actually shows anti other, not the recent ones, but shows anti-Israel protests uh, staged at Sweden, uh, a Davis Cup tennis match uh, outside uh, the stadium in Malmo uh, in Sweden following uh, the 2008-2009 Gaza war. And as for the second video that we showed, uh, this uh, footage is actually from May 9th. Uh, the same moment was captured here by TRT. Uh, showing uh, the pro-Palestinian protest that did take place in Malmo. Hence, it's not a photo taken in Denmark. Neither is this the king of Denmark. We have picture proof here. We have a comparison of both the man that we see in the balcony and the king of Denmark. Even though they have a slight resemblance, it's a good try, but two very different people. Neither is this the balcony of the royal uh, uh, family in Denmark. As you can see, two different balconies uh, located in Copenhagen. So why is Denmark even in the picture? Uh, King Frederick uh, the 10th of uh, Denmark arrived in the Swedish capital uh, from May 6th to 7th, marking his first official uh, visit abroad, hence giving uh, credibility to these type of fake claims. Aye, aye, aye. The Eurovision Song Contest, Catalina, as we well know, has been known for a little bit of political controversy uh, uh, throughout its, <laughs> its existence, of course. Usually it's, it's related to how countries vote. If they're getting along, they might chuck each other 12 points, that kind of stuff. If they're not, zero, nul point. Tell us more about the uh, political shenanigans with Eurovision. That's right, Mark. Even though the Eurovision host, the European Broadcasting Union, insists that they try uh, to keep the Eurovision contest free of political messages, especially this year with the context in Gaza, it does seem that they've been inconsistent with this rule in the past. Here are some examples, just to name a few, starting uh, with Austria's, Austria's uh, drag queen uh, contestant Conchita, who won in 2014 and whose uh, presence in this competition was controversial in some countries, including uh, Russia at the time where Putin uh, was implementing an anti-gay propaganda crackdown in his country as uh, Conchita's win proved a landmark for LGBTQ, uh, the LGBTQ community and representation. Uh, then there was Ukraine's 2022 win, criticized also by Russian officials, who argued that the song, the winning song, uh, violated Eurovision's uh, rules against uh, political content due to the song's allusions to the Crimean crisis. Uh, 
And finally, of course, uh, this year, Israel's controversial participation in the contest that was protested by about 12,000 people in Malmo asking for Eurovision to ban Israel. Israel was not banned. Uh, however, Israel's uh, song, uh, Israeli song contestant, Aidan Golan, who finished in a fifth place this year, was ordered to change her song lyrics uh, called October Rain, an apparent reference to uh, Hamas's October 7th attack in Israel. Uh, she changed uh, the song lyrics to the word hurricane instead of October Rain. Uh, the contestant was also uh, booed during her Eurovision final performance, also during a dress rehearsal, proving for a tense atmosphere inside and outside the Eurovision arena where protests were also being held throughout the contest. So uh, can this Eurovision uh, contest ever remain a political, uh, at least this year, it seemed impossible given the actual uh, context in the world and with Israel's war against Hamas in Gaza. Katalina, thank you very much indeed for Truth or Fake. Thanks to Yuka for the business. Thanks to you for watching. Stay with us. More to come here on World Roundup.